Welcome back. If you're joining me for the first time, I would like to welcome you. I am Amy Lee, certified professional pet groomer since 2003. I am not a dog dietitian or a dog nutritionist. However, I am pouring a whole lot into this for you guys. So stay put. Guys, we're going to talk a little bit about good health on a dog and how we can know that our dogs are healthy. This is Gus. This is my dog. I try my best to feed him the best food that I can. I also groom him regularly. He gets a bath at least once a month as well as a groom pretty much all the time. I'm throwing him up on my grooming table because I am a groomer. I do fully understand that what I put into his body as far as food's concerned as well as routine grooming and good hygiene maintains this dog and keeps him healthy. Those are the most important things I can do for him aside from exercise and good care. So let's look at his eyes. His eyes are not weepy. They're very healthy, very, very bright. His eyes are very bright. Let's look at his teeth. He's got a little bit of tartar. We're just starting on a raw diet as well as we, I feed him good kibble. He's got great color to his gums. That's an indicator of a healthy dog too, the color of their gums. Now, I wanna show you something else. Let's look at his ears, guys. This is another indication of health. Now, I wanna point out, it is May, it is allergy season. You can see his ears are so clear, so free of debris. This is all, this is all an indication of good health. If you see an abundance of crap and debris in their ears, it is the body expelling bad things, getting rid of toxic yuck. His ears are so clean. You know, that's an indication of good health. Now let's take a look at his skin. His skin has wonderful color. There's no flake to his skin. It's very healthy. And yes, I bathe him about once a month. I brush him regularly. But this is not just from grooming, guys. This is from diet. It's very important what we feed our dogs. Very healthy skin. Now, I wanna point out, take a look at all the pollens and all the spring stuff that our animals are having to deal with right now. It's, it's here, it's everywhere. We just cleaned this deck off a couple days ago. So they're exposed to allergens. Our vets are gonna tell us, oh, it's, it's allergy season, it's springtime. We should see all this yucky stuff in our dog's eyes, ears, and on their skin. No, we shouldn't. They should be able to handle it, and I agree. There are dogs that suffer from some allergies, but I wanna tell you, a lot of it has to do with what we put into their bodies and how we maintain their skin and coat. And those are basic pet care needs, guys, to keep our dogs healthy and happy and living long for years to come. And I only hope that we can all achieve that. Guys, let's make some bone broth, or let's call it power broth. So you go to the store and you get some of these bones from your butcher. They are dirt cheap. My store sells them in bags, like three or four of these in a bag. Put them in your crock pot. Cover the bones with water. We're gonna add about a quarter cup of apple cider vinegar for some acidic value that's going to help pull that bone marrow out of the bone. Look at that bone marrow. That's what we want, guys. That's the power food. I'm gonna to explain to you in just a second what is so powerful about bone broth. Notice we have some connective tissue left on these bones. That's good, that's gonna add flavor. Your pets are gonna love it. Cover those bones with water in the crock pot. We're gonna simmer this stuff for a long, long time because we want all those nutrients from that bone marrow to go into this broth, this power food. All this connective tissue is gonna add great results. So our raw bones are covered with water. We are going to add about a quarter cup of apple cider vinegar. This is gonna draw the nutrients out of that bone marrow. 
12 hours later, let's take a peek. What do we got in here? Well, you can see it's all coming out. It's making that broth. It's thick, it's greasy. This is what we want, but it's not ready yet. We're gonna simmer this for one to two days until we get this. I've strained it and now I'm gonna store it in the refrigerator for no longer than about 10 days, or I could freeze it. Bone broth is not just for sick dogs. This is power food. This is going to build their immune system. Now let's talk about golden paste, the power of turmeric. This is the recipe that we'll be following today, guys. It's very simple. So let's go over those ingredients. I want you to know that turmeric is a wonderful anti-inflammatory for joints and hips, but here's a bonus. It also fights cancer. The cinnamon adds some great antifungal and antibacteria activity. Now you may be wondering why we're adding black pepper. Well, it helps the body to absorb the turmeric. Very important. And of course our coconut oil, guys. We know this is a very, very powerful ingredient for our dog's skin and coat. Now we mix that all together nicely, get all the lumps and bumps out, add all our ingredients, and we can store this in the refrigerator for approximately two weeks adding about a quarter cup per day, maybe even a little more. Uh, feed twice a day, split it up into um, an eighth of a cup per meal. The serving size should be approximately a teaspoon per 10 pounds of body weight. And there you have it guys, you just made your pet a wonderful superfood. So I wanna introduce you to your new buddy, your crock pot. I just threw some butternut squash in the crock pot, let it go all day while I was at work on low and Gus loves it. Now for them raw veggies, remember we have to put them in a food processor. We need to grind them up. That way they're very easy for your dog to digest and they get the nutrients. Organ meat, my biggest issue with this diet is the organ meat. I have trouble to get Gus to eat it. I had to take the chicken livers and grind them up with a little bit of garlic in the processor he still he doesn't care for it I'm having the same problems with beef liver for him he doesn't care for it so I'm going to have to try to give him smaller doses for a little while and see if he'll be able to deal with it Today I decided to cook up the liver and see if maybe I can at least get him to eat it that way I know it's not the same as raw maybe I'll just give it to him for snacks also today I am giving Gus pork for the first time pork should be frozen first for several days before you would give it to your dog. So I'm just trimming a little of the fat off and cutting it up into bite sizes so that hopefully he won't gulp it down and then he will chew his food. But uh, I'm gonna supply about four days worth of pork for Gus by doing this. Of course, here we have the beef liver. Not a fan of it. He doesn't like it. We gotta figure it out. He does love the sardines. And I'm very happy about that right now because I'm not able to get the bone in his food because I can't grind the meat. I need a grinder. So the fact that he is enjoying these sardines is great because he gets a good source of omega fatty acids through the sardines, which he would be getting that in the bone. Not the same, but at least I can get that in him through the sardines. The organ meat is another area that I, I haven't been able to figure out how to get that into gas. So one thing that I'm gonna try is to keep it frozen and slice it frozen so it's more firm because I think the texture is bothering him. I know it's very pungent in smell and flavor too, very different than anything that he's used to eating. So he is picking out the organ meat, whether it's chicken livers, gizzards, beef liver, he's picking it out and putting it to the side. I just wanted to share with you uh, one of my favorite clients. Her name is Chloe. She is a Shih Tzu. And she is about almost 11 years old. Chloe, can you say hi? She's the sweetest baby in the world. She's definitely overweight. Chloe, can you stand up? It's really hard for her to stand during grooming, too, because she has to hold all this weight. Let me show you how wide she is. All right, this, this didn't happen overnight, let me just say. I knew Chloe when she was from a puppy on. She was a beautiful puppy. She really was. And she was a happy little girl, but her parents think that it, because she likes their snacks, which includes ice cream, cookies, and all kinds of anything else that they eat, that she deserves it too because she's such a sweetheart. She does deserve whatever she wants, but we know what's good for her as her caregivers. And I can clearly see that over the years, the decisions haven't been quite so great. 
for Chloe's diet. And we do happen to be talking about diet right now on Go Groomer. So that's why I wanted to share Chloe with you guys because she's one of my favorite girls. And when Chloe comes in, it makes me so sad to see how overweight she is and to see the effects that it has on her body. Let's just take a look at her ears. You know, this, I'm telling you, this is a direct effect from food, from bad stuff in her body. Look at Chloe's little eyes. They've always been highly stained, and it is common with Shih Tzus, but we all know that this can be corrected through food, good food in their body. And with Chloe, who also gets kibble, which I, I'm not sure what kind of kibble they feed. I have a feeling it's probably something from the grocery store, you know, which is what most people do. But aside from that, Chloe gets a lot of other things like ice cream, cookies on a daily basis, and all table scraps, which sometimes that could include, you know, pizza, whatever they're eating, spaghetti, and kibble. So she's getting the kibble, which is probably not a fantastic product. And she's also getting a lot of junk food. And in return, Chloe is obese. It's okay, honey. And she's a wonderful girl. And it breaks my heart. Chloe just had this removed. I'd say in the past two years we've been noticing a lot of cysts popping out on her here and there and I do think that a lot of this is as a direct result from a lifetime of a bad diet you know the same same with these ears and same with Chloe's eyes yeah you're such a good girl so that's why I wanted to share Chloe today, guys. I wanted to share Chloe today because I want to show you guys what happens when we choose to feed our dogs nothing that they really need. And I am I am positive that I'd say 99.9% .9 of what Chloe eats and has eaten her whole life including the kibble that she eats, is not at all what her body has ever desired. And as a result, we have a dog who in her older years, when she should be enjoying her couch time, right baby girl? She is suffering. She's suffering from within and it's obvious because it's all coming out. And we love you, Chloe. We love you, Chloe. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, please do. I don't want you to miss out. I would love to have you here with us. We're pretty awesome. Thank you for tuning in.